Take one. Hello, fun day subbers. Take two. Hello, club day subblers. Take three. Hello, club day funders. Take four. Take five. Take six. Hello, clubber sunders. <sighs> Take seven. Hello, Sunday clubbers. Welcome to another edition of KMPC SCTV. Sorry about all those mistakes earlier. I'm just not on my game today at all. Funny enough, because this week is all about learning from our mistakes. Mo and Mabel will be dropping in. And Mabel is in a bit of a state this week. We'll be learning our memory verse and Alan will be back to tell us all about how you can help with our Christmas song. But first, over to you, Tara. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm sure over the last few months, you have had the chance to play some games uh, in your house. And uh, we certainly have in our house. Um, we play all sorts of games, board games and card games. But one of the games that we sometimes play is Top Trumps. And uh, we have a couple of options in our house. Maybe you have some at your house too. The first one is this one, Top Trumps Elements. And if you are into science or the periodic table, uh, you might like to play this one. It wouldn't be my cup of tea. But um, nonetheless, the one that I would choose to play uh, would be this one, Top Trumps deadliest predators this one's more my level and that the the top trump the most deadly predator is this guy here the great white shark and it says here that he weighs 2268 kilograms and uh, on the bottom one it says his killer rating is 95 which basically means stay well clear of this guy he's probably going to get you so, you know the game, Top Trump split up the cards between the people who are playing and you want to win the Top Trump cards and win them all. Well, today we're going to have our own game of Top Trumps with some Bible Kings. So, I want you to uh, think back to last week and think about King Solomon. You might see him on the screen here on his very own Top Trump card. King Solomon started off well as a king who followed after his father David. But unfortunately, before long, he went a different path. Solomon ended up marrying about 700 women, many of whom did not follow the true God. And he also, because of these women, often he set up false places of worship. You can see there that he scores a number seven for that. He encouraged people to follow after other gods rather than the true God that we know. God was not pleased with how Solomon was reigning as king. And so God prophesied that he would split up the 12 tribes of Israel. And 10 of those 12 tribes would come under the, the nation of Israel. And two small tribes called Benjamin and Judah would come under the king of Judah. So enormous amounts of land and power were being taken away from God's king. However, God was still going to be faithful in the midst of this, even though Solomon had messed up. King Rehoboam was the next. King Rehoboam was Solomon's son. And I wonder, will he be any better than his father? Unfortunately not, boys and girls. We can see here that he as well worshipped other idols. He actually killed a bunch of people as well and he set up false places of worship for others to follow after other gods. He did not follow the God of David, his grandfather. In the meantime, in the nation of Israel, God had set Jeroboam to be king. Would he be any better? Unfortunately not. Have a look at his top trump. You can see that his idol worship rating was eight and he set up false places of worship to a level of about nine. 
In fact, he made two golden calves and he actually lied to the people of Israel and he, and he told them that it was the golden calves that had successfully brought them out of slavery in Egypt way back at the start of Exodus. We know it's our God in heaven who had done that by his almighty power. Imagine two golden calves actually having any power to even blow a puff of smoke. And yet Jeroboam believed that these calves had the power to pull the nation out of slavery. So God was not pleased with Jeroboam either. Moving on then, have a look at the next top trump and we have Abijah. Abijah became the next king of Judah, the two tiny nations. And Abijah was Rehoboam's son. Well, his scores don't look too healthy either. He also encouraged the nation to set up false places, places where they could worship calves that are made out of gold, uh, meaningless statues that had no power at all. Abijah was not a good king. Next, then, we find that we had a king who actually is not our top trump of evil kings. He's the exact opposite. Amazingly, in the middle of all this darkness and bad kingship, we have a man called King Asa. And King Asa became the king of Judah. He also did what was right. He chose to follow after God like King David. In fact, he even got rid of his mother from being queen mother because she wanted to set up a pole to worship a false god. He had the courage to say no to that and to get rid of her. The Bible says this, that says Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. Let me say that again. Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. Wouldn't it be great if that was what was said about us? So maybe we won't do the same bad thing twice. Yeah, I guess you're right. When you think about it, God can take a bad thing and turn it into a good thing. Yeah, like I now I know I need to study for my spelling test. Mabel, you didn't study. Oh boy. Now let's see if we can clean up this mess and turn a bad thing into something good. Oh Mo, thank you so, so much for reminding me of all this. Yes, let's clean up this mess and decorate our tree with some brand new decorations. Okay, well, we'll see you next week, boys and girls. Bye. Hi, boys and girls. We're going to learn a memory verse together today. And our memory verse is a lot about light in the darkness. But before we learn our verse, we're going to have a look around my house and we're going to talk about some different lights around where I live. So follow me.
some lights, like this street lamp, light up the roads and the path so that we can see where we're going and know the way. Some lights, like this security light, light up the darkness and warn us of any dangers. Some lights help us see in the dark so that we can work and learn. Some lights light up the darkness and they bring us joy and happiness like Christmas tree lights. And boys and girls, our memory verse today is taken from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 and it says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light and those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. Long before um, Jesus was born, it had been promised that a saviour would come who would light up the darkness in the world. And he would do this by rescuing people from their sin and calling them to be friends with God. And just like the lights around my house, Jesus can light up your life. He can help you to learn about God. He can bring you joy. Um, he can guide you and he can keep your life safe. And we're going to see if we can learn this verse together now. And we're going to split it into two parts. And we're going to learn the first part this week. And then we're going to try and learn the second part next week. And then we're going to put it all together. Okay, so we're going to learn the part that starts with The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. That's the first part of our verse. So let's read that bit again. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. This time let's take out the word darkness and the word light and see if we can still say it. So, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Let's take out the words the people walking and go again. Okay, so the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And let's take out the last three words, have seen a. Okay, so we've no words left. And let's see if we can say it together. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Easy. Next week we'll learn the second half. Bye for now. Merry Christmas, Sunday Clovers! Alright, okay, maybe it's a little too early for that, but it is New December and we're already planning the KMPC SCTV Christmas Special and we need some help from you. Now, one of the nicer things about this whole coronavirus lockdown thing was a couple of videos that we got to do that a lot of you got involved in. We did All About Jesus. And then we did Unexpected Rescuer. Jesus, Jesus, he came to rescue me. Well, it's time to do another, and this time, a Christmas song. We're going to be doing Born is the King, which most of you should know. So lift up your voice and sing out his praise. It's Christmas, Born is the King, rejoice in the day. It's Christmas. And if you don't, you'll pick it up really quickly. Okay, so here's what we need you to do. Number one, look up the action video so you can learn the song and the actions. We've included it at the end of this week's in the Club TV episode and we've added it to the kids' uh, Kirkpatrick songs playlist. Um, then when you're ready to go, when you've learned the actions and you're comfortable with the song, then record a video of you and your brothers and sisters doing the whole song, okay? Now, once you've got the video recorded, have your mum or dad send it to me on WhatsApp and my number is on the screen right now. And then, um, well, that's it really. We need all videos sent in by the 4th, Friday the 4th of December, okay? If you send it any later than that, we might not be able to include it, so please try and get them in by then, okay? Now, before I go, there's a few more tips for you, okay? Number one. If you can, wear something Christmassy. Christmas jumpers, reindeer antlers, fairy lights, whatever you have, put it on. Let's get ready for Christmas. Number two, we, we love to hear you sing. So if you love to sing, sing along with the song, okay? So um, yeah, that, that's the second one. Number three, you know what? 
get your mums and dads involved and your older brothers and sisters. It's Christmas, why would they not want to, all right? We want to try and get everybody in there. Number four, we would love everyone in the church uh, to, to see the video, and they'd love to see you. So at the end of the song, why not give everybody a big wave, okay? Now, I think the last one is, have some fun, all right guys? So listen, really can't wait to see as many of you get involved with this one, okay? And um, that's it, bye. Yari Wee Benz. And welcome to Cover to Cover with Keith. Cover with a K. Now, I've been asked to read one of my favourite stories. So I've pulled a book off the shelf there and I'm going to read it to you now. And it's called The Hug Machine by Scott Campbell. Whoa! Here I come. I am the Hug Machine. I am very good at hugging, the best at hugging. No one can resist my unbelievable hugging. I am the hug machine. My hugs calm people down. They cheer them up. They make them go completely nuts. I am the hug machine. I hug everything I see. No one escapes the hug machine. My hugs make the biggest feel small. And the smallest feel big. I hug soft things, hard things, square things, long things. I am the hug machine. Oh, do you need a hug? I think you do. Hug accomplished. There is nothing the hug machine will not hug. What about me? I am so spiky. No one ever hugs me. They are missing out. What about me? Surely I am too big for you to hug? Of course not. Not for the hug machine. People often ask what the hug machine eats to keep the hugging energy high. Well, the answer is pizza. The hug machine likes pizza very much. Refueled and ready for action. Hug, hug, hug. Hug, 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 may hug the hug machine. Hug machine is always open for business. Well, what a cracking wee book that was like. Now remember, don't go hugging anyone outside your bubble. Maybe a whale or a tree or an ice cream van, but that's it. Don't go hugging anything else. Now, hope you have a fantastic day and a great week and I'll check you in a bit like. Jump in. Well, Sunday Clubbers, got it right that time. Thank you for joining us this week and I hope we've all learned that no matter what we do and how wrong we get it sometimes, that God will always forgive us and we can learn from the mistakes that we make. I hope you'll all be practicing your Christmas song this week. I know I will. So remember, keep singing.